Hey, Steve Noble, Noble Moto. Got our uh, 2012 883 iron up here on the lift today. And today we are going to install a new fuel pump. This one is still technically working. Um, usually your fuel pumps generally work or they don't. However, in this case, every once in a while when my wife turns the bike on, it doesn't just do the normal, zzzt, you know, like Chevy's do and everything else. Every once in a while it'll go, and we have no idea why. So, I'm putting a fuel pump in before it leaves us stranded somewhere. And uh, maybe in the process we'll find out what that noise is. Picked up a fuel pump from my local parts supplier. Uh, I made sure I got the extensive kit so it comes with a new pickup screen. It's got a new fuel filter. It's got a new relief regulator valve is what I think that thing is. Uh, yeah, so next step from here. Gonna, take, gonna go over the other side, then we're gonna take the gas tank off. Step one is going to be to remove your fuel line. This there's a Torx bit in there, which is either 516 slash 8 millimeters for the outer hex, or it's a T20 Torx bit. And with that T20, you should be able to just lefty loosey that sucker right on out of there. You might have to use a wrench, because there is some medium strength thread locker on this screw. Take that out of there, set it to the side. From there, you should be able to just take that clip right on off of there. Once that clip is off of there, you should be able to just lift this fuel line right up out of there. You're going to get a little dribble. It should hopefully stop in a few seconds. Hmm. It's not. Put that back in. Go find your rubber caps. So I have some vacuum caps here that I purchased. They're just vacuum caps from like a local hard auto parts store for vacuum lines. But they're gasoline rated. And if you find the right one, you should be able to slide it right over there. That should keep the gas from dribbling on out. Note, I added the hose clamp to seal it up a little bit. Once that's done, you can move here. Drop your Allen wrench on the ground. Move here. It should be able to just wiggle this rubber hose whoop, right off the tank there. That's your overflow slash vent. And then follow the electrical line down here to the right. You should find the quick connect down here. Press the little button in. Pull the electro quick connect apart off. This is the electricity for your fuel pump and the feedback for your uh, fuel gauge or low fuel light, depending on what setup you have. So from there, pick your Allen wrench up off the floor. You can take a half inch deep well socket and just uh, lefty loosey the rear bolt right on off of there. Hold the other side with your quarter inch Allen. Should be able to just break that free. Ratchet that nut right off of there. And you can slide that bolt right on out of there. Keep track of your washers and everything in order by threading the nut back onto the bolt. Now, move up to your front tank mount. In the same scenario, just break that bolt free while holding the other side with your quarter inch Allen. Again, you can pull that bolt right on out of there. Hopefully your tie downs aren't in the way. Thread the nut back on there. Now, depending on how much gas you have in this thing, uh, it, it will vary in force it takes to lift it up off of there. We're going to lift the front of it up and then lift the back right up off of there. Make sure you have a spot already set up to set this thing down in, too. Swing your fuel line out of the way. And up and off she goes. Now I'm going to take this to a gas can and drain the rest of the gas out. In order to remove the fuel pump out of this, it's going to take a T20 Torx bit. 
probably going to need it on a wrench or a ratchet. But just go around, break all these free. And if you just wiggle this around ever so carefully, you should figure out how to get it on out of there. Promising it will be the easiest thing, but keep at it. You'll figure it out. Don't force it. Just wiggle around until it lines up. So uh, I'm struggling to get this out, so I'm going to take this clip off right here. I don't know if it's necessary or not, but trial and error. Push this white plastic thing here up off there. Maybe. A little more gas is going to come out. Oh, that was a fuel filter. God damn it. Ah. Alright, now the fuel filter's out. Let's see if we have any more luck here. There we go. Maybe. There we go. I don't know if it was really necessary, but we did it. That's not a necessary part of reinstallation because that will be a giant pain. Cool. Now, set that down there. I'm going to set our tank in a safe location. Still a little gas in it. So, okay, so we have our sending unit right here. We have our new one here with our new gasket, new fuel pump, new rubber thingamajigger, new, uh, I'm guessing there's a fuel pressure regulator. New plastic hose, hose clamps, filters, and other rando clamps and pickup screen. So, I'm just going to very carefully disassemble this thing. Apparently, I'm reusing the filter housing. So, first things first, I'm going to take this clip off of this pressure regulator. So, you can remove the pressure regulator. Do take that off right there. Remember, we have a new one. So that side where old parts go. Well, since we're only saving the uh, regular fuel filter regular housing, we'll just cut the line. It's kind of brittle, so that was slightly unnerving. So there's the new line. There's the old line. So first things first, let's figure out how to get this thing off of here. Um, I have a razor blade around here somewhere. Mm. That cut really easily. So there's our fuel filter housing. We're going to set that to the side. Actually, no. We are going to, while we're at it, let's open up the new pressure regulator. Do, do, do. Check this out, check it for cleanliness. Let's flip the, uh, take the old O-ring out of there. New O-ring down in there. Boop. New screen, which is already on the bottom of the sending unit there. Or the fuel pressure regulator, sorry. Slide that into place. Slide the O-ring in place. Take the right fuel pressure regulator. Slide that down into place. All snaps in, all well and good. Take our clip. 
make sure you put the clip on right side up. Uh, looks like uh, looks like the smaller indent there goes up on this one. Cool. It's all up on there, all nice and tight. That's ready for reinstallation. Matter of fact, while we're doing it, we could just get one of our hose clamps out, our new hose clamps. Where'd they go? There we are. <sighs> Set that down there. Take our fuel hose. Man, that is really tight. Try that on the right side. It's the same size, right? Looks like the same size. Yes. So we're just going to push and twist. Uh, we may have to take a lighter and heat this plastic up a little bit, or a heat gun. Has a crazy tight fit on this thing. I don't think it needs to be that tight, but it is. So, heat it up off camera with a uh, heat gun. Now we're going to take a flathead screwdriver here. Take a flathead screwdriver here and tighten her up. Then from there, let's cut the zip ties on our fuel pump here. Both of those off to the side. Take our one fancy metal hose clamp here. Should be able to pop that free. Hopefully. In case you're wondering, usually you can get a flathead screwdriver in that little flat spot there and pry it open. If that doesn't work yourself some trusty pliers. Pop that sucker right up off of there. Carefully take your fuel pump off of the side. Unplug it. There should be a little release tab on here. Which may or may not be easy to see in this video, but I swear to God it's there. And then press the little release tab and wiggle the plug right up off of there. From there, your fuel pump pickup screen and all that jazz can come right off. And man, look at all that crap on the bottom of that thing. Huh. It's got some bad gas. Cool. Anyways, this is your low fuel switch. Low fuel light. Take that hose clamp. Set it off the side. In case I forgot to say it, this is the grounding wire that grounds your fuel pressure regulator. From there, let's take our new fuel pump. Make sure you take the little pickup boot, whatever, off the bottom of the fuel pump. Very important. Take our new screen. Now, God damn it. Okay. Now the bottom of this fuel pump, this is where the fuel gets picked up from. This is like a little alignment pin thingamajigger. It's got a little spring tab here. You want to push the plastic over the fuel pickup and push this down over that little spring through the spring tab. I gotta admit, this thing is like absurdly tight. 
but you should be able to push on it by hand and get it to stick on there. The important thing is, does it fall off? No. And it uses this to avoid picking up crud or anything into the bottom of the fuel pump. Take the little hose off, or a little cover off that there too. Take this weird rubber boot thing. I don't know why they, they use this thing. I don't know why they don't just make the outside of the fuel pump thicker. Whatever. But you can take that thing, set in place, set your pickup screen up like that, and then install the new zip ties and clamp that come with the kit. I would encourage you to reuse or to use the zip ties included, because it's a chance that you bought some cheap zip ties from the hardware store, and they might break down inside gasoline. Nobody wants that. So, set that one right up there. Take this one, wrap it around the bottom. And when you tighten this up, make sure you don't like pinch off the pickup screen from working has like a little tube inside there. So just kind of snug it up there so it's not going anywhere. Clip the end of your zip ties. Boopsies. Don't get the wires. Boopsies. There we are. Now from there, set that off the side. Now from there, you can take this metal zip tie, the metal zip tie clamp, whatever we want to call that, the one that's going to make sure it's all extra secure in place. You can put that on here. Now these actually take a special pair of pliers that you, when you crimp down here, it tightens them up. Do you have the special pair of pliers? Probably not. That's okay. Most people don't. What you can do, start with a pair of needle nose, squeeze it down there on the bottom. Don't bend your needle nose like I just did. Squeeze in a little bit. Try it with a pair of channel locks. Whoops. Squeeze in too tight, screw up the clamp, have to go to the hardware store and buy another clamp. Yay! Take your new hose clamp. Did, uh, be mindful of the giant uh, screw thingamajigger on there. And uh, put that in a good location where you'll still be able to get it into the fuel pump. Or into the gas tank. And tighten her up. Fuel pump is mounted. Now... Well, we can plug it back in. Doop. Make sure it clips in place. Take your filter housing. Take your new filter. Slide it up in there. So make, your fuel, make sure your fuel pump's down in there. Make sure this little tab here lines up with that little notch right there. Wait a minute. How in the world am I going to get that hose on there? Let's put the hose on first. Stick our hose clamp, run up the hose there. Take our hose, slide on the fuel pump. Again, take our flathead screwdriver. Put our fuel filter in there, and this little tab ready to be lined up. We can slide this down in place right there. Take your hose clamp, bigger diameter section, point it up, slide it up and on there. Okay, so you need to make sure that smaller diameter section right down there is in the groove. 
it's in the groove over there and everything is secure. Place your grounding strap back on here. That way your pressure regulator is grounded. I'm going to bend that tab out just a wee little bit to make sure it makes contact. There we go. Make sure that makes contact. Now this sucker, finally, is ready for reinstallation. Make sure your float moves nice and free and the wires aren't up against it. Otherwise, your low fuel light won't work. One more step before we install it. I have to change out the bottom of the tank seal. Don't want that thing leaking out on us. Should be able to grab that with a non-bent pair of pliers. Work it under it with a small screwdriver. Lift that sucker right up on out of there. Take our new one. These little tabs on here, make sure those are pointed down. I think. No. This little groove here, this notch on the bottom, that gets pointed down. Sorry about the birds, I have to do this with the garage door opening because the gasoline fumes. And then push the O-ring down in there. see how this all fits up in here. See if it goes in easier than it came out. Shit. So the knob on that, or the nut on that fuel, or that hose clamp is fighting me. So I do have some stainless steel zip ties here. You can get these from industrial supply places. I think I bought them for a uh, some header wrap on a cafe racer years ago. But either way, they're going to work in this situation. Kind of hard to get tight. But a little... Whoops! A little ingenuity, you can do it. There we go. So, stainless steel zip ties. Bend that metal tab back. Now, should be able to reinstall everything. Right up into the gas tank. And it apparently fits in here with the same bare minimum clearance it came out with. Good. You know, Harley, it really wouldn't have been a big deal if you gave us maybe a 30 second more clearance in there. Would have been nice. Just saying. All right, but it's up in there, despite its tight fit. Now, not that one. Now you take your 20, 20 T20 Torx bit. It's a T20, right? Yes. Well, you can just start all your screws in with your fingertips. Start with the ones that line up easiest first. And when you do this, you're going to want to make sure you start each one of these in by just a few threads. Because there might be some finagling around to get them all to line up. Don't run any of them in tight until they're all started in there. Gas tank is ready for reinstallation. Take the tank, drop your back end down there first. Make sure your fuel line swung out of the way. Drop your front end down on there. 
jiggle it in place till it all lines up. Now reinstall your back tank mount. Reinstall your front tank mount. Go to your rear mount, tighten her up. Of course, torque these to spec. Pick up your seal after it dropped on the engine. Take the cap off, slide it back up on there. You might have to spin your hose around, your high pressure line around, until that tab on the fuel line points towards the right side of the motorcycle. That means it will sit in this gap here. And this notch here will go over this plastic tab right there. Hopefully you can see that. If you can't, when you get in there to do this, it should all be pretty apparent. Just make sure your line's down in there. Make sure that lines up. Take your screw, put a little dab of medium strength thread lock around there and tighten that little screw back up with your T20 Torx bit. Any day now, that thing will tighten up. All right. From there, reconnect your vent line. Once your vent line is reconnected up there, you put this little plastic thing back in that little plastic holder thing. I don't know what that thing's called. Um, from there, you can plug your fuel pump and everything back in. Push it in until it clicks. Put it behind the little plastic shroud. Take the little plastic cover that fell off your fuse box Pop that back into place. All right, then actually reinstall this cover, which we're not going to do because I'm waiting on these little uh, clips to show up. Uh, but yeah, everything else is back together. So put some gas in it, see if it leaks, start it up, see if it works. As you're doing this, make sure it's not dripping out the other side. All right, check for leaks. No leaks so far. That looks pretty good. Right over the other side, turn the key on. I turn the handlebar switch on. Hopefully, something should make a noise. It did. Make sure it's in neutral. Press start button. That's all I got.